1851, the French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette embarked on a remarkable quest that would ultimately unveil an astonishing revelation. As he approached a formidable stack of boulders, his intention was to use explosives to clear the way, completely unaware of the extraordinary subterranean maze concealed beneath the surface. The explosion unveiled a perplexing web of tunnels and chambers, shrouded in secrecy for more than three millennia, prompting inquiries that appeared nearly insurmountable to resolve. Mariette's journey led him to uncover strange stone boxes buried beneath the land known as the Serapium of Saqqara, an ancient burial ground situated around 15 miles south of the famous Giza Pyramid site in Egypt. The underground burial chamber took the form of a tunnel carved into the rock of a mountain with alcoves and chambers branching off from the passageway. Within these chambers lay massive stone boxes, a distinctive feature that set the Serapium apart. Hewn from granite, these receptacles were truly colossal, with the largest weighing almost 90 tons. What made them even more astonishing was their impeccable symmetry. Every edge and surface of these boxes was meticulously carved in straight lines. However, when Mariette stumbled upon these enigmatic containers, he discovered that the majority of the 25 boxes had been plundered by grave robbers over time, leaving only one untouched. This led to a perplexing question. What was the purpose of these monumental boxes? The effort required to create them implied a significant undertaking, and the ancient Egyptians would likely not have invested such resources without a specific intention in mind. The mystery surrounding these artifacts remained unresolved. Before delving further into the enigma of these stone boxes, let's explore some background information about Auguste Mariette himself. Born in 1821 in Boulogne-sur-Mer, a French seaside town overlooking the English Channel, Mariette was commissioned by the French government in 1850 to search for historic manuscripts from various traditions in Egypt, including Arabic, Syriac, Coptic, and Ethiopian. His task also included purchasing these manuscripts for French museum collections, renowned for their excellence worldwide. However, Mariette's initial journey to Egypt in 1850 was met with challenges. He struggled to locate the specific manuscripts he had been assigned to collect, largely due to his lack of experience in this endeavor. Faced with the prospect of returning empty-handed, Mariette sought an alternative that could earn him the recognition he desired. His interactions with local Bedouin tribes in the region eventually led him down a different path. In essence, Mariette's initial pursuit of manuscripts transformed into a profound quest to unearth the enigmas concealed beneath the Serapium of Saqqara. The stone containers he unearthed gave rise to profound inquiries regarding their source, function, and the civilization responsible for their creation, a riddle that persists in captivating researchers and enthusiasts to the present day. The assistance of the desert Bedouins led Mariette to an extraordinary discovery that would secure his lasting legacy. These Bedouin guides pointed Mariette to Saqqara, a location situated to the south of Cairo, Egypt. Saqqara was once a sprawling necropolis, serving as the burial ground for both the city itself and Memphis, the former capital of ancient Egypt. Within Saqqara, numerous iconic structures from Egypt's ancient past still stand, including the well-known Steppe Pyramid of Djoser. However, Mariette's initial impression of the site was less than enthusiastic, as he saw only a vast desert expanse dotted with sand dunes. Over time, Mariette's perception changed when he noticed the head of a sphinx emerging from the ground. Legend suggested that this sphinx had once been part of a grand collection of 600 similar sculptures. This remarkable array of sphinxes was believed to lead to the Serapium of Saqqara. This intriguing connection motivated Mariette to search for the ancient structure, and he began his exploration not far from the Pyramid of Djoser. Following the hypothetical line of statues, he aimed to uncover the entrance to the Serapium. It seems that Mariette had a clear vision of what he was seeking, influenced by the writings of the Greek historian Strabo. In his 1882 book, La Serapium de Memphis, Mariette quoted Strabo's description of the Serapium of Saqqara and its surroundings. Strabo had written about a temple to Serapis situated in a sandy area where sand dunes were heaped up by the wind. Among these dunes were partially buried sphinxes, suggesting a potentially perilous path to the temple, particularly during sudden windstorms. 
Mariette believed that Strabo's text provided a valuable clue, effectively guiding him to rediscover the long-lost Temple of Serapis after centuries. This buried sphinx, along with 15 others Mariette had encountered in Alexandria and Cairo, was part of an evidence-backed avenue leading to the Memphis Serapium. Eager to continue his excavation, Mariette recognized the need for more than just human labor. Although he had already assembled a team of 30 local workers, he realized that additional resources were required. As Mariette explored further, he sought to uncover the true entrance to the Serapium. Through his determination, guided by historical texts and the insight of the Bedouin guides, Mariette embarked on a journey that would unveil the secrets of the Serapium of Saqqara and contribute to his enduring legacy as an Egyptologist. In 1851, French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette encountered a rock obstacle, prompting him to use explosives for clearance. Despite its unconventional nature, this mid-19th century action reflects the competitive Egyptian archaeology environment. Guided by Biouin locals, Mariette explored the Serapium of Saqqara in 1850-51, initially underwhelmed by the desert landscape. His discovery of a sphinx hinted at the Serapium's location, Quoting Strabo, he followed historical descriptions to unearth a cache of ancient artifacts in the Serapium's chambers. Among these treasures, the tomb of Pharaoh Chemweset, reigning around 1279 to 1213 BC, stood nearly intact. The Serapium comprised greater and lesser vaults, intricately carved from sandstone bedrock, containing massive stone boxes. Ordered by Pharaohs Chemweset and Samtigai, these boxes, intricately carved from granite, weighed up to 80 tons. They held empty sarcophagi, leading to speculation about their purpose. These stone boxes were revealed to serve as coffins for the burial of sacred Apis bulls, integral to Egyptian religious beliefs. These bulls, marked by black and white patterns, represented Osiris and Apis in a synthesis called Serapis. The Serapium, where both bulls and humans were interred, highlighted the cult's significance, which endured through the Ptolemaic era. Antoine Gigel, however, questions this interpretation. Mariette's groundbreaking discovery catapulted him to fame as an official guardian of Egyptian monuments. Numerous speculations about the nature of the stone boxes have arisen, ranging from extraterrestrial origins to the possibility of them serving as ancient batteries. However, the prevailing and most plausible theory ties them to the cult of Serapis, firmly rooted in ancient Egyptian traditions. As these monumental grand artifacts persist in their capacity to captivate, their historical context provides valuable insights into their enigmatic presence. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for regular updates.